We're back in the studio and I want to finish up the Micro Four Thirds Triad with the last leg of the triad, which is the software. I mentioned early on that to compete with the big full frame cameras using the Micro Four Thirds system, you have to have the best, most up to date camera, you have to use the best lenses that are made for these cameras, and then you have to finish it all off with software. And so that's what I want to show you this evening. So what I've done is I have gone into Mylio, which is the program that I use to keep track of my images and sort them and make collections. And here I've made a collection of, of high ISO noise images that are fairly noisy. And it was the high ISOs that made me start to look for other software. That's one of our Achilles heels with the Micro Four Thirds system is you can't typically shoot as high of ISOs as you can with the big full frame cameras but you can do much better than you would ever imagine. And I came up with this piece of software called DxO Photo Lab. We're gonna show you DxO. I'm gonna take and I'm gonna show you how I get there in Mylio. Within Mylio, you can go out to any program you want. You can go to Photoshop, you can go to Lightroom, you can go to DxO Photo Lab, you can go to Capture One, you can go to Luminar, Affinity Photo, you can go to Pixelmator, you can go to anything. It's really a pretty cool way of doing it. The way you do that is I click on this image, go up to Photo, Open With, and we go to DxO Photo Lab. Now you can see there's a number of different things up here on this screen as well, but I'm going to use DxO Photo Lab. Okay, so there comes DxO. Now, one of the claims to fame from DxO Photo Lab are the lens and camera corrections that they pioneered and what they did was in the very early days they looked at every lens and every camera that you could shoot and built lens corrections and sensor corrections into the software they're called DxO modules download missing DxO modules we can take a look and see if there's anything missing it would list all the different modules that you would need to download and you can download them they come down free uh, very simple when they're missing they generally pop up but it's it's the noise reduction tool that made me really look into this program so let's take this into the noise reduction tool here we have the noise reduction tool and in DxO Photo Lab, you have two types of noise reduction. You have HQ Fast that it does very quickly, and you have Prime. And I've always found that the Prime is the most ultimate noise reduction tool. So the way you work this is you click on this little icon over here to grab an area, and you move it around to a spot, and then that spot comes up over here as to what it's going to look like. I click on Prime. Prime only works with raw files. So if you're shooting JPEGs, you can't use the most ultimate part of this tool, which is the Prime. One of the benefits of shooting RAW. Now, when you put the little box over this tree, and this, I put it on this tree for a reason, we're looking at the very individual branches of this top of this baobab tree in Madagascar. And over in this box, it will take and show you the sharpness of the detail on the branches and then show you what the noise is going to look like in the back of the image. It really looks good. Now when you do this you only get this little box as the example of what Prime is going to do because there's so much going on in the noise reduction that if it had to show with the image getting the Prime noise reduction it would take way too much horsepower so it only shows you this little box. I'm going to switch over to this other image and let's look at this with the prime. I'm going to click on the little prime square, put it up in the top, and I can still see really lots of detail in the branches here, but I can also see that the noise has been reduced dramatically in the background sky. There's the ability to adjust your luminance. If you know how to work with noise and what this all means, more power to you. I really just leave it up to the basic settings that DxO does and I find it to be extremely good. When I'm done with this image and I like what I see I simply click on close. We're going to close the noise reduction tool down and we hit export down here in the lower right hand corner. Up comes this a number of options. You can create all the options you want. There's about a half a dozen that come plugged in directly with DxO Photo Lab 
but you can make your own with any number of different outputs, whether they're JPEG, DNG, TIFFs, whatever. This one I'm going to set up for my stock photography business. Stock photo, 5100 pixels long. I'm going to process it as a TIFF. It's going to be 8-bit compressed. It's going to go to the destination, which is the original image folder. Resolution 300 PPI. We're going to take off enable resizing. I'm going to do the resizing in another piece of software I'm going to show you in a minute. So I click on export and down here you'll see the export. We're going to use a unique number. I've already got an image in there with that number on it. So we're going to give it a Tash 1 just so I can go through this process with you guys. So here it's showing the process over here. Now I, I put this on HQ fast. I didn't intentionally do that. We should have done Prime, but Prime would have taken considerably longer. Prime does take longer to uh, export as an image because it's doing more processing. Let's go back to show in folder in Mylio. And here we go. Here's the image that we just processed dropped right back into Mylio, right, right beside the original. It's one of the things I love about Mylio is I don't have to tell it to be re-imported. Mylio sees it, brings it directly in, and you have the image that you've just worked on right next to the original raw image itself. So that's the process of getting an image into DxO Photolab. But let me just go in through and show you a few more things about DxO Photolab. You've got your histogram up here, very similar to Lightroom and in many of the other raw conversion programs. You've got smart lighting, you and you have the ability to adjust smart lighting. You've got selective tone, you've got which allows you to adjust highlights, mid-tone shadows, blacks. You've got the DxO clear view. That's kind of a, it adds a lot of contrast, but once in a while it works pretty well. You've got your basic contrast control. You've got color accentuation if you're into that. I'm typically not messing with my colors very much. Those are the main things that I typically have. There's one here that's missing. I'm going to click up here and I want to add a palette for tone curve, which a lot of people work with. When I'm working, preparing these images for stock sales, I use the tone curve, set the highlights to 250 and the shadows to 10 and it adjusts it automatically. So those are the basics on the right hand side and it's really not that much different or difficult than Lightroom. You've got your your cropping tool up here brings it up, here's your cropping tool you can use any number of different uh, sizes such as 2 by 1, 16 by 9, you can go 4 by 3 so it's it's very simple. Uh, it took me a little while to get used to the palettes on the right hand side, mainly the ones that are hidden. You can create presets. I don't have any, but you can create presets. You can work on an image and then copy those changes and then add them to other images that you you're working on. So the most important thing is that I feel the raw conversion quality is better than anything I've ever used, in particular when I'm working with things that need noise reduction. This is the ultimate software that I'm using for processing my Micro Four Thirds images, specifically my Lumix images, to give me the absolute ultimate quality that will allow me to compete with with the full frame cameras, and I, I very much think it does. And we use one more piece of software that I'll show you that allows us to take the finished TIFF that we produce here in DxO Photo Lab, and we move it into a program that interpolates it and brings it up to the really large sizes that allow us to do great big monster prints. And the program that we've been using to do this with is called On One Resize 2018. Now we've been using this program for many years. It was originally called Genuine Fractals, but this is the most updated version and is still what we feel is the best program for interpolating an image into much larger sizes. Now we're going to be switching from the Baobab image that we were working on in DxO Photo Lab to an image that is one of our limited edition fine art prints. We're switching from the Baobab tree image to this particular image because I have an example that we'll be showing you of this image printed to 24 by 36 inches and hanging on my wall in my home. So if you go into the main options of 
on one resize 2018 you'll see a number of different options including Canon, Epson and HP printers. Obviously the printers of choice. We have an HP Z3200 in our office that we print from so we're going to select HP resin coated and then you'll notice all the different sizes from 4x5 all the way down to 40x60. The image that I'm going to be showing you at the end of the presentation is 24 by 36 inches of this particular frame and so we're going to select HP resin coated 24 by 36. It shows us here that this image is 36 by 24 at a resolution of 300 dpi. It has a sharpening option. We turn that off and sharpen after. But I have never done a test with this and it's something you might want to try. For now we're going to leave the sharpening off and then we're going to select done. The image goes through the process of being interpolated and sent out as a 24 by 36 inch 300 dpi TIFF. And the final result is this 24 by 36 inch fine art print that hangs in our home and shows as much detail and definition as anything I have ever worked with. This image was shot with the Panasonic Lumix GH4 and the Olympus 40 to 150 f2.8 lens with an Olympus 1.4 times teleconverter. I can actually see detail in the pine needles of the trees in the foreground. So this is what I mean when I say that Micro Four Thirds can compete with the traditional full frame mirrorless cameras as long as you're following the Micro Four Thirds triad rules of using the most current cameras with the most professional quality lenses and processing the raw files through the best raw conversion software you can get which at this time I believe is DxO Photo Lab with Capture One running a very close second. So that's it. That's all folks. I hope this finally proves to you that even using the smaller Micro Four Thirds censored cameras you can compete with the full frame cameras that the industry has brainwashed us into thinking we need to get really super high quality images. If you follow the three rules of the Micro Four Thirds Triad by using the most current up to date cameras available with the absolute finest professional lenses and processing those files through the best raw conversion software you too can hang prints as beautiful and as large as this on your walls. Thanks for joining me. Give us a like here on the Natural Exposures YouTube channel and come over and visit us on our Facebook page which is also Natural Exposures. See you on the road.